Um, hi, my name is Stella Brennan. Um, the work that I'm showing in the Biennale is called South Pacific. It's a 10 minute single channel video that I made in 2007. It's looking at the history of the South Pacific during World War II. That's kind of kind of one way you could look at it. Um, and it's using um, a mixture of visual sources from ultrasound and from uh, radar and, and the audio is sourced from um, sonar pings. So it's kind of looking at the history of technology related to that, that conflict. I was really interested in and sort of discovered, you know, I came across all these kind of amazing interrelationships as I was researching the project and one of the things that was really interesting to me was that one of the first ultrasound scanners, um, sort of ultrasound kind of started to be developed in the late 40s and early 50s and one of the first scanners used parts of a B-29 Superfortress, which is the planes that bombed Nagasaki and Hiroshima. So there's this kind of actual physical connection between medical ultrasound and war aircraft. And so one of the things I sort of started to do was to sort of think, okay, well how, and David, my partner, had suggested that if you immersed objects in water, you could make, use an ultrasound scanner to make images that were basically very similar to sonar images. And I found also during the course of my research that during the Korean War, um, radar operators were actually trained using ultrasound probes and models of terrain. So there's all these kind of interrelationships between these different technologies. So I went out <laughs> and bought myself a model aircraft um, from the local hobby modelling shop. And I didn't realise at the time that the aircraft that I purchased, I just wanted a B-29. But the B-29 model that I bought was the model of the plane that bombed Nagasaki. You know, it could be a number. Of, I mean, I think the thing that I was really interested in was ultrasound, and the thing that really made me want to do a project with David, my husband, was that he can look at an ultrasound and he sees all kinds of information. And I look at the same image and I don't see any information, I don't, I don't perceive anything. Mm. Um, and so I was really interested in how you can have this kind of visuality, these two different kinds of visuality, you know, me as an artist going and looking at a piece of contemporary art and getting all this information out of it and understanding the context of it and him as a doctor also having access to this huge amount of information but in a completely different context in a completely different way so these two different kinds of visuality were something I was really interested in exploring. Because the other part of my practice is, as, is installation and sculpture, mm -hmm. and installation is never the same twice. You know, you install it in a different gallery, and it's almost a different artwork often. Yeah. And there's something, there's something quite nice about the stability of, you know, first of all, posting a DVD to the other side of the world and it, it being still the same thing. Mm. I mean, I think the tricky thing with the work, my work is that um, it's kind of a mixture of quite low res, kind of grainy images of the ocean from the film from the nose camera of a jet and of this footage of ultrasound. It's getting that level so that um, you, can, you can kind of absorb all the elements simultaneously without kind of feeling overwhelmed. Mm. Um, so, the imagery that I use is quite ambiguous. So I think, yeah, with, with, this, with this particular work it's in, in installing it, it is trying to um, remove as many of the things that might distract people from just uh, perceiving and immersing themselves in the work. 